Yo, the hell's going on guys? Welcome to your sixth responsive design tutorial and in this video I want to talk about fluid layouts. Okay then gang, so before we dive into the code and start making it more responsive, I want to talk to you about one little thing and that is a fluid website layout. Now, what I'm going to do is compare this to a fixed layout. A fluid layout uses relative measurements and it responds to the width of a viewport between your media queries. And fixed layouts use static measurements and they do not respond to the width of the viewport. So in my opinion, it's always better to use a fluid layout because you have varying different screen sizes and you want to capture them all. And whereas a static or a fixed layout will capture certain breakpoints, like for example, you've got a breakpoint at 768 pixels, so it's going to change then. But between that breakpoint and the previous one or the next one, you don't want it to be static. You want to pick up a whole range of different device widths. So I'm going to show you a quick example now. Okay then guys, so I'm back here in this website that we made up and um, we've got these two media queries right here. I've just added a couple of comments. Um, this is for tablets, this first media query, and this second one is for mobiles. And typically, when you're making a responsive website, you're going to have these two media queries or two breakpoints um, at a bare minimum. Okay, I pretty much use these in most of my projects and uh, the first one tablets i've used a max width of 768 pixels because that's like the ballpark figure of a lot of tablet widths um, i might do another one up here that's like 900 and something for bigger tablets uh, but these are the kind of base ones i use so that's for tablets and then this one here is for mobiles and it's got a maximum width of 480 pixels so anything below that is going to show these styles and it's going to target pretty much uh, every or most mobile devices okay so at the minute, this website is using a kind of like a fluid uh, layout because I've used percentages and these are relative measurements. They're not absolute or static measurements. So you can see currently these are all about 23% in width, right? And as I reduce the size of the browser or the viewport, you can see these are getting smaller, but they're still all 23% in width. Okay, so they're still taking up 23% and they're still equally spaced apart. And that is what I mean by fluid width. For all of these different widths right here, or a fluid layout, should I say, all of these different widths, which could represent all different device viewports, we're still getting this 23% uh, width on here and they're shrinking according to the device uh, viewport width. Okay, so they're relative to the viewport width and they're responding to it. However, if I was to use, say, a static measurement, let's just take it down to this first breakpoint right here, which is 768. Now, if I make this instead uh, width, let's say, 320 pixels, yeah? So we're going to get two, the same there in each column, but this time they're not percentages, okay? So they're not going to change width dependent on the width of this. So as I scoot this lower, you can see they're not changing width. And when I get here... It's going to move them like that. We've got this huge space on the right hand side. So they're not responding to the viewport width. And this is what is considered a static uh, layout. Okay. And I don't like to do this because then for all these different width devices between here when it first happens and then here 480 pixels for all those different widths there, it's going to look like this, which I don't like. Okay. So if I change this back to a relative measurement, and that was 46%. Then this time, as I scroll or rather reduce the size of the viewport, the size of these are going to respond to the viewport. They're going to get smaller and they're still going to remain 46% in width until they reach this breakpoint. So it looks good on all these devices. Okay. So that is what I mean, guys, by a fluid layout. And that is why I prefer them. So I'm going to be using relative measurements like percentages in the rest of this playlist and I suggest when you're making responsive websites you do the same unless you're just targeting very specific devices with very specific widths and you're not targeting a whole range of different widths okay so that is my suggestion to you I'll see you guys in the next video